GHB, and abductees. Now, abductees, what I mean is uh, alien abductees. Everyone knows I'm a MUFON investigator. I followed this for decades. There was a doctor named Dr. John Mack, psychiatrist, Harvard University. Brilliant man. Brilliant psychiatrist. So he's a physician. And during his tenure at Harvard, he started to get interested in abductees. And he started to do some research and interview each one. And he did hundreds. And he wrote a series of books about it. Now here's where I always come into the problem when I'm, when I'm doing these sort of things in front of groups or at conferences. I get a very small section of the community who thinks that abductees and UFOs is crap and don't even bring it up, Dave. Then you got other people who I talk about cryptids and they say, oh, that's crap, don't talk about it, Dave. In the reality, you are an expert at what you're interested in. And what you're not interested in, many people refuse to even acknowledge it. And some of those people in the UFO community, I've said this before, when I give a talk in front of a MUFON group, sometimes the whole front row is all PhDs. Brilliant people. And when I get off stage and I go, I usually have dinner and I get invited to dinner by these groups, they all surround me and they say, Dave, you're one of the few people who has come to the table with facts. This is nourishing. This is good. You know, let's, let's keep talking. Very appreciative. Well, John Mack came to the table with facts. He had, inter he had interviewed hundreds of these abductees and all told a very similar story the experience, the abduction, one consistency. They'd wake up at night in their bed and they felt absolutely frozen. They couldn't move. Sound familiar? Sometimes they had lost a memory. Sometimes they didn't. Sometimes they could remember everything. Things that happened to them on wherever they were taken, claiming a ship. Some of the things that were done to them. But they couldn't they couldn't lash out. They couldn't move. They felt like they were somehow frozen and their muscles weren't reacting. Sound familiar? So that goes back to GHB. And there, there seems to be some linkage there. Whether people want to acknowledge it or not, there, there seems to be. I was contacted by a very, very, very famous scientist. If I said his name, you'd know him. And he asked me to meet. And we sat and we talked for three hours in a hotel room in this city. And he asked me not to name him, not a problem. And we talked about everything I'm talking to you here today about. And we also talked about those cluster maps, maps that I developed. And the GHP and the cluster maps were highly intellectually stimulating to this man and the colleagues that he worked with. And he told me that he had a series of six colleagues that he didn't name who had top secret clearances. And they shared this knowledge amongst themselves. And they discussed some of the science that's behind various hypotheses and things. And he said, Dave, they, we've talked at length about your work. And you've uncovered something that is highly unusual. The consistency in the facts surrounding the people is interesting. <laughs> Says to, there seems to be several different types of issues going on simultaneously. You got the people that are getting dropped into water or placed in water. You've got the people that appear to be dying from falls. You have the people that are taken and are later placed miles away from the scene where they were last seen. You've got people that are taken and when they come back alive, they have no memory. You've got people missing clothing. You've got the water relationship. So what was refreshing about this, and this happened, I met with this person multiple times, and what was refreshing is that somebody with high integrity, high knowledge, highly educated, had acknowledged that we are really onto something. 